Hey everybody, it's Professor Wills here from Pasadena City College. Well, we're continuing our discussion of French Impressionist Edgar Degas. Uh, we've taken a look at um, an example of his painting, the subject of dance in um, his painting of the rehearsal. Uh, let's take a look at something um, that is another study, um, an analysis of the human form, but something even more uh, going on there with this particular artwork. Now it's executed in his favorite medium, which was pastels. So for those of you who've ever uh, worked in pastels, they look a little bit like a, a box of crayons when you pick them up at your local art you know, store. Um, they're, they are not as waxy. They're a bit kind of ch a mixture of kind of creaminess and chalkiness. Um, but the benefit of pastels, of course, is you can, um, you know, render your artwork with sort of a technique that's, you know, could be linear. It could have a very kind of uh, drawing stroke like uh, texture and look to your work. But pastels are also uh, blendable. Um, so you could smudge what you've done, blend colors together, layer. So there are other possibilities that excited Degas. And so you find a body of work um, that he executed in that medium. In fact, Pasadena's Norton Simon Museum has a beautiful collection of paintings, um, but also works in pastel by Degas. They're in a uh, special room with diffused lighting to protect them from uh, fading. So let's take a look at the work of art I want to talk about for the purposes of our survey class. So let's move on to our PowerPoint here and I'll get that going. Um, minimizing my own headshot here, but here we have the work in question um, and it is called The Tub from 1886. So um, again, the medium is pastels. You can see what I'm talking about, this sort of stroke-like linear quality um, that you can see because of that quality of, of pastels. Um, the subject um, seems pretty traditional. It looks like, you know, one of those studies one would execute in a life drawing class, um, a view um, of a female figure seemingly washing herself, herself you know, in the, in the days before plumbing. Um, in a large uh, wash basin or tub, um, looking down um, at, away from us, the viewer. It's not a portrait or anything like that. So we're the focus of her face, her individuality, her emotions, that kind of thing is not uh, what is the focus for the artist. Instead, we're looking down from above at her um, form. Um, what you can see is Degas is rendering her in a pretty, pretty traditional um, Western approach to art. You find that he's using chiaroscuro. We have a, you know, a subtle mix of highlights and shadows to uh, describe an illusion of mass and volume um, in this study of the human body, seemingly. But there's more going on here, as I promised, than just um, a study of a, of a woman at the tub. And a lot of that is inspired by something that was happening um, in world history at that time. And believe it or not, even though J Japan plays such a huge part of our um, culture nowadays, uh, whether through technology or you know, popular culture or cuisine. Um, back in the 19th century, there was very little known about Japan until about this era, because it was kind of the last holdout, the last country or nation that was that had opened up to the West, and they had resisted that um, contact for a long time, and of course, imperialist pressures and that kind of thing um, eventually um, um, broke that down. But the benefit in terms of art history is for artists like Degas and others who were progressive minded, who were hungry for new ideas, new ways of thinking, new visual influences. Um, what emerged out of Japan and the whole rage for all things Japanese called Japanisma, um, um, where all the decorative arts of, of Japan really um, inspired a myriad of fashions and furniture and, um, and fine arts. 
the one thing in particular that was exported um, in large amounts because it was small and affordable was something called the Japanese woodblock print. Uh, these were relatively, um, you know, uh, small in size, maybe 12 to, you know, the max, maybe 18 inches in height. Um, and artists like Degas collected them wildly. So the one you see on the right here, and let me have my headshot go away for just a minute, um, is a, a woodblock print that Degas actually owned. And look at the subject. Hmm, very similar. It is a woman at the bath. Now, you do see a woman, a Japanese woman in a kimono standing on the left, but behind the screen in a large tub is another woman bathing or at the bath. What would have excited about been exciting in terms of aesthetics to Degas is the fact that Japan followed its own path. It had its own um, evolution in art history that had nothing to do with what would have been drilled into 19th century artists who attended, for instance, the, you know, France's Royal Academy of Art. You know, the Japanese had no idea about Western art history. They would have had no concern for what happened in the Greco-Roman world or the Renaissance, etc. Their path was unique. Their subjects, very relatable, definitely, but their approaches weren't as obsessed on these illusionistic uh, practices for trying to create artworks that were some kind of extension optically of our own reality. What you also find with Japanese art is an emphasis on color, line, and form. And I'm going to be saying that a lot for the rest of the semester because color, line, and form are going to be the building blocks of what would become uh, modern abstract art. But it begins with influences, and influences that come as far as places like Japan, where you look at a woodblock print here, and you see the strong use of outline and line to delineate the woman's kimono and its many folds, um, that maybe describe sort of the checkered um, pattern on the screen and its grill, um, the um, strong use of unmodulated color, meaning they're not obsessing on highlights and shadows and trying to make you believe something is a three-dimensional object when it's a 2D art form. Um, so you can see, you know, a bold color unmodulated, applied here, and by doing so, you have a sense of shape and form, um, not only with the outlined approach with this woman um, in uh, on the left, but you see it in the shape of the screen. So these are going to be building blocks um, that, you know, are going to help leap artists down a more avant-garde or progressive pathway. Pivoting back then to Degas drawing, you can see direct influence here in terms of subject, but though this part of his pastel drawing is fairly traditional on the left, it's what's on the right, this kind of right third of his pastel drawing, which has objects we recognize that kind of contextualize and complement what's going on in the drawing. You have supplies, you need to you know, before indoor plumbing, you had to heat up your own, you know, bath water and haul it in in pitchers like you see here in kettles. You might have a brush or scissors, that kind of thing, things, objects on your bathroom vanity. So the objects themselves kind of explain that white um, uh, space here as if it's a tabletop or the top of a bath vanity table, that kind of thing or counter. But do you see that if they weren't there, it would be hard to tell what this is. It would be like, is this more of an extension of the floor? Is it, is it a table? We can't see the edge of the table. We can't see the legs um, or any other facet of, or side view of that surface. It looks like, um, and I'll pop back here a little bit so you can see my gestures. It looks like it's been up tilted in our direction. Um, so much so that it almost looks like that table is um, parallel to the picture plane itself and those objects should slide right off like they're, you know, mount standing on ice. 
this is what Japanese aesthetics um, and art history is doing to open the eyes for artists like Degas. Um, by doing that, by making, a, you know, by being less bound to a convincing uh, rendition of an optical reality, at least on the, the right side of this drawing, with an emphasis on form and shape, with this kind of curved, bulbous shape of these pictures and the hairbrush, Degas is playing with um, these elements, with shape, um, even with outline. The figure, too, if I had a closer detail shot, you'd be able to see a, a faint blue outline um, that surrounds this figure. So even though she's, you know, modeled in a traditional uh, Western recipe, it's the beginnings of what is going on here. So it's baby steps, but Degas starting to explore. How can I just focus on formal elements like color line and form and perhaps take art to um, a new um, direction, creatively speaking. And we saw Manet begin that, of course, with his artworks um, in the 19th century as well. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for tuning in. Degas, influenced by the arts of Japan. And of course, this will have a huge impact on our next artist, Mary Cassatt and the Post-Impressionists coming up soon. Thanks.